March 17, 1991, 23-year-old Carrie Parker left her job in Quinlan, Texas and was never seen again. For the last 30 years, Trish Gager has been searching for her sister, and most of that time, she's felt alone. And I've been very angry most of my life because I feel nobody looked for her. She had been looked for in 30 years. That is until Adventures with Purpose recently came across her case. Full of a lot of emotions right now as we're in Hunt County, Texas, looking for Carrie Parker. We found her car right now. Some of my biggest fears is I didn't even want to be a part of this one right now because the car is 30 years old. She was 23 years old, mother of three, on the way to her son's birthday party. We're so close to having the car out. This is one episode you're not going to want to miss. Welcome you to Quinlan. Is that how you say this? Yeah. Quinlan, Texas, where we are looking for Carrie Mae Parker, who went missing March 17th of 1991. This is Trish, who is Carrie's sister. And we also have a good friend, Lori, over here. Hi. And so with this one, a much different story than we've ever told before, because she's been missing now for coming up on 30 years, and it wasn't until 10 years ago that she was actually yeah. reported missing officially. Her son's birthday, I believe, was March, I believe it's March 22nd, and uh, she was gonna throw him a birthday party. It was, I think he was gonna turn six, and uh, she never showed up. It wasn't totally out of the ordinary, but as the time went by, you know, we're like, well, something's wrong, something's not right. 2010, I called, found out that Terrell PD had changed the missing persons to a welfare check. And for the last 11, almost 11 years, it's like they've treated this case the same as when they first got it back in the 90s. I don't know how how y'all feel about things when it comes to psychic. Uh, I was using a Facebook marketplace. This lady responds to me and I'm like, yeah, meet us up and all this kind of stuff. And when she sees me, she's just staring. I mean, she just, the look on her face was like, I was fixing to like trip out because it made me very uneasy and uncomfortable. She started telling me that she saw her but she said that it was in deep water, like... She said it was in 50 foot of water. Yes. Here, did she point you in a direction as to where here at the lake that might be? She said the deepest part... That that would be close to the dam. But there, we don't have any kind of sightings or anything that she was there. So Plus, I would say let's head over to the dam first area. Let's see if we can actually gain access over there. Um, and then let's check out Hawk Cove. And then if by chance you can get any access to the quarries today by chance, you know, we're, you know, let's see if we can get in okay. on any of those today. And we'll just kind of play it by ear. You know, we could always come into this with a plan, no plan. You know, our plan was to meet up with you here at 9 a.m., you know, figure out the story and start coming up with that plan throughout the day. Search Sam. Forty old chicken. <laughs> now we begin. So as we get started, if you've never been here before or seen side scan what we're looking at or sonar couple of things we're looking at. The first one is we have side imaging taking place here. We're casting 75 feet right, 75 feet left. Anything that you see black is water columns. So if you look at the 18, 36, 54, 75, those are kind of like grid lines for us. <clears throat> and so from the boat to the bottom is eight feet. So this is the down imaging. So if you look at seven and a half feet, we'll come up seven and a half feet. So anything black is water column. This one over here is live scope. So this one is actually happening in real time, whereas this one is a picture in time. 
So, real time, you can see fish swimming around. This one over here, picks are in time. Sam, you gotta, you gotta hold the gimbal like smooth and level. I'm trying to, it's kind of wavy. <laughs> so, as you guys can see, the waves are definitely kicking up. But the good news is that, that her, have you noticed there's always good news when I talk? It's always good news. Always good news. Always good news. Oh. Is that you can actually see that the side scan is still giving us a really good reading and feedback. So is the down imaging. We're currently casting 39 feet down, still casting 75 feet left and right. And the reason why we're still along the dam is because there's, there's an upper road. And, I mean, the dam's yeah. been here for a long time. And yeah. back in the 90s and the 80s, you know, access points were a lot more lenient. So if by chance, accident, or on purpose, or intentional, we have to clear all these areas. Yep. Yeah, we're going to have to call that one, Sam. Like, we're coming over sideways on the boat, in front of the boat. <laughs> oh, Sam! Oh. All right, so you guys just came back and I noticed Sam is very wet. Did you see how much water is down there? It's like up past his boot. It's like going inside. Yeah, we were out there, we started, but the wind was really kicking up. Lots of big waves coming. They kicked up fast, too. Yeah, too. Waves over the bow. We're just getting sprayed in the face. Um, well, I am the good news is we got half the dam completed. The good news is I think that we still have a cove kind of protected. Yeah. So we have success, Sam. Yeah, man. I'm I'm really happy about that. Looks like we get to put it right here, and then we can just go around the corner. It's pretty pretty awesome. Sweet. sneak along this levee here where this little row goes across the lake and then I'd like to finish searching that first boat ramp that we came in today we don't know if our day is going to end there or they're still trying to get us access to the quarries as well so while they're over there doing that let's uh, put in a few more uh, scans over here Dan I, got Dan I got Dan now by the way yeah we traded yeah. I am not Sam Tell if this is a car or if we have. I have a car there. Yeah, we also have a uh, memorial. I wonder if they left the car in there. Let's go check that out. All right, right here. So it's uh, four feet tall. Looks like a vehicle. It's upside down. And it looks fairly old. Like it could be 20 or 30 years old. See if those balloons are tied there. Do you think they're tied or they just coincidentally fell there? Oh! Yeah, they're definitely not tied to anything. They're just caught up in those bushes. And they're happy birthday balloons. I don't. Her son's birthday, I believe, was. March, I believe it's March 22nd, and she was going to throw him a birthday party. It was, I think he was going to turn six, and uh, she never showed up. Right there, just landed on it. Okay, there we go. There we go. Solid lock. Solid. It's really nice. solid. My motor is going to hold me in place. Okay. Okay.
Yeah, I can't see nothing, can't find any tags. It's definitely upside down, it's an older car. I'm, I'm ridiculously cold. I just ripped off a piece of it, having no idea that this is towards the front. So I'm gonna suit up and I'm gonna head in. What color was your car? Blue, blue Cadillac. We were just looking at all of our old archives of photos. That's a blue, that's I a have, light blue. I had an 81 Duke Skylark. Yeah. yeah. And it was a grayish blue color. Exactly like this. Oh, there you Buick's made by GM. Do we know? Don't know. Inside the door panel says GM Canada. What we have right now is we have a uh, red interior. The door panel uh, made by GM. Buick is made by GM. We've got the uh, bumper as well. This we did, that look, looks like we did bumper. look at the bumper. That is that? Cool. Here's another one off of a different. There you go. Buick. So I'll we'll bring it over here. This side. There should have been another one of those bumpers right here. Yeah. That's it right there. Yeah. Yep, that's it. You got the black. You got that right there. You got your black all the way around. As you see how it tapers between here and right where it meets the black. Yep. You have taper. Right. It tapers up. <laughs> and if we peel away some of this rubber, we might get a better color. Right now we need to call the sheriff. You want me to call him? Okay. Yeah, we don't want to be the one to do it. Okay, let me call the sheriff, okay? Good. How far out? Oh, the, your first tall sign on the left-hand side. Your no fishing sign. Your mm -hmm. no fishing sign. Okay. So I have a marker actually tied to that. So I have an orange line mm -hmm. going from that pole down to the vehicle for you. Is attached with the magnet right now. It's you got something attached to the vehicle right yes, now. Yes, sir. Okay. Yep. Okay. So what I'd like to do is talk to you. Absolutely. How are you? All right. Uh, we're doing this. Yep. We're doing this. Yeah, we're raising it. Yep, we're raising it. All right. Front rail. Yep. Like tonight? Yep. yep. Right like now. tonight, like right now. So, suit up, get ready. Okay. So. In order to do this, we don't want to lose anything out the passenger side. So we don't want them taking it and bringing it up like this. Mm -hmm. So with that, I need to cinch this. So I need to bring these chains and cinch them up a little bit. So that way when he starts pulling, these are gonna be cinched up a little bit tighter, but we're gonna cut, bring this chain, this chain, this one, and this one to one center point. But these ones have to be um, more so. These ones have to be out more, so that way those are a little bit longer, and these ones have to be shorter. 
so that way when he pulls it's coming up like this the sun found something um, yeah so, so what, what does this mean to you or what is it or tell me about this what, what is this uh, so i loved smurfs whenever i was a kid and uh, my mom i remember she'd buy me just about everything that i wanted the smurfs but uh, i specifically remember smurf bed sheets so when i seen this it was it was uh, hopefully a good indicator where did you find it it was uh, stuck on the door panel all right i flipped it over and so this is yeah. more than likely put there by you when you were a kid. I hope and praying that it was. All right, well, we're gonna get to work, man. Jared and Sam are heading out now on the boat. All right, so once he comes up, it should be rigged and ready? Yeah, it should be. anything out and to bring this up as level as we can. With that being said, this line right here that we're going to first zip to is hooked to the front of the car. Okay. I've attached it so that way the longer chain is on the passenger side, the shorter is on the driver. So as we begin to lift that one, it should lift this way, okay. but not too much. To me. Yes, sir. Okay. All right, go get the next one. No 
It's all yours now. Yeah. Let me uh, let me take my fins off and uh, come out of the water. Cars just pulling apart, Dan. My big, I have a big fear going on right now what? because we're upside down and there's just so much that's coming apart on that car. Sheriff can agree with us that you know at this point that area has to be 
you know, forensics on it. And with the appropriate dive team, it's going to come in and really section it off. And I mean, it's a multi-day. Get that set up and mark it and all this. We'll do that for you. Thank you. We're being a part of another one. That makes six where we've provided answers for the family. Um, as Sam was mentioning, as you guys already know, you know, it's confirmed that this is 100% the car belongs to Terry Parker. Um, what their plan is now, in the next couple of days, they're going to get their state dive team out here because the car came apart and the pieces that did. Terry is still out there with you know, the car the pieces. Yeah. So with that, and, and I say that she is. You know, we don't know that for sure. But by the time this video comes out, we'll title it properly and we'll put it in the description for what we know. Um, thank you for being with us, and if you've not done so, please do subscribe and keep caring for your family and your thoughts tonight. Thank you. For